Rhodium Radio knows how to podcast. Rhodium Radio knows how to podcast. In the city, city of Wilmington, we keep it rocking. So come on, shake, shake it for me, Kelly. Yeah, Dr. Dre is in full effect, and I gotta tell y'all a little something. Eze is down with us. MC Ring, you know he's down with us. DJ Yella is down with us. Arabian Prince, you know he's down with us. Tony A. The Wizard is down with us. JJ Fag is down with us. Timmy T, you know he's down with us. DJ Pooh Boy is down with us. Toddy P and Spade, they're down with us. My boy Ice Cube, you know he's down with us. I like to mention, so pay attention to where I'm from. Compton, but the tapes are from the rodeum. My name is Dre, listen while I play. And by the way, I'm also down with NWA. Yo, Steve at the rodeum is down with us. Slang and funky tapes, it is a must. We're number one. one, one, one. Tony A. Welcome everybody to Rodian Radio episode 50 and I am Tony A. The Wizard, your host and I know everybody's got their checks, okay? So don't lie, okay? I want you guys to go to DocuMixer.com and get the DocuMixery 20% off with the promo code TRMD20 and for those of you who didn't get your check, I know probably uh, either the, the government took it back or child support. Okay, don't lie. I know who I'm talking to. All right, so and uh, I got my mascara. It looks like a pair of panties, though. But this is a Rodian radio given to me by my boy DG Media Clips. He provided us with mask. Let me give a quick shout out to Mini Micheladas, my boy Blasto. He never gave me his full name, but I'll just call him Blasto. And this is his uh, gear that you'll be seeing soon. But Mini Micheladas, get at him at Blasto Wear uh, on Instagram and Blasto Street Wear on Facebook and Snapchat Blasto uh, 818. But uh, before I introduce my next guest, this is episode 50. When we started this uh, podcast, we only thought about doing it for a couple of months, but it's taken off. We're doing real good. And uh, I'm proud of that. I'm thankful for uh, my team uh, helping me uh, accomplish at least 50 episodes. But without further ado, please allow me to introduce Frankie Quinones, also known as uh, um, Cholo Fit, or uh, uh, Juanita Carmelita, Creeper, my brother. How you doing, Frankie? What's up, on me? <laughs> yeah, I, I almost got tongue-tied right there. I got, I my, like, I got my mask too, so don't trip. We're just being smart, but we're six feet apart right yeah, now. Yeah, so. six feet apart. <laughs> we usually do this, like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Plus a, plus a modelo kills the germs. Is what hey, says. you know what was dope? That commercial that you guys did for la originals with esteban mm -hmm. and baldacci that shit was hard man. oh all right I, I, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that you know we had to come up we had to be clever about it you know because obviously everything that went down but also you know because i was planning to i had my ticket to go out to south by southwest and everything and it was a big <laughs> thing you know right and then uh and then obviously that got all canceled and then so you know hit up the homie esteban and, and then i said man we could do something and so we just played off of, you know, the state of the world. And, and you know, we were still playing at Sabre. Just right. Like, all the parking lots are empty right now. So we're like, fuck it, homie, let's just go to a parking lot. And, you know, right, we'll right. do it like that. And, Binge of coronavirus fucked everything up, you know? Yeah, homie, I mean, shit. I was right in the middle of a, right in the middle of a tour, you know? Right, right. And uh, we were in uh, Buffalo, New York, right when the when the shit started hitting the news. And, hey, so we had to go fly to JFK. It was like, pfft homie i was like it was like the worst place to be no you shit. know like you know i'm just saying just the right from what the new you know the media they, they right. make you feel like oh shit, what you like? this food just coughed right there watch out you know, right, like, right. you know i was really like you know <laughs> like dodging bullets or whatever but yeah. uh, but i made it back did my 14 days of quarantine just by myself and then so that's dope man. yeah yeah and i only kick it with a few people and then yeah so, that'll work you, you know i had a boy that i was working in the studio with and he was like i'm gonna go see my girl in peru and i was like don't go bro you're going to get stuck over there. No, nah, no, nah, we're good. He's still over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's, he's on, Yeah, yeah. He's been I, over I was worried I was going to get stuck in New York and shit. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we made it back. Now, you know what? I wanted to ask you, just to break the ice a little bit before we get into a little bit of your background. What is some of your all-time, if you can give me at least five, favorite comedy movies ever? Oh, shit, homie. Whew. Uh, I got a long list. Homie, it's all right. But, uh, Take your time. But you know, like Up in Smoke is one of the one of the classics. Che the Cheech and Chong movie I like. They just put that on Netflix. So I'm like, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, I like uh, 
Uh, I'm going to get you, sucker. I don't know if you remember that oh, one. Oh, hell yeah. I'm showing my age, you know. I'll be 40 this year, FYI. So I know some folks are like, what, what, what's I'm going to get you, sucker. I'm, I'm going to get you, sucker. It's a funny ass Wayne's movie. Uh, let me see. Fuck. Happy Gilmore. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that's a dope one. Uh, fuck, man. Caddyshack? Oh, yeah, fuck. Caddyshack 2. I loved it even better than the first one. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know these they're not even comedies homie but the amount of laughs we've, I've had from watching La Bamba and like Stand and Deliver yeah like me and my homies grow up we quote all those funny ass scenes like <laughs> actually and Bob and fucking La Bamba like to me that was like one of my favorite co- like, you know obviously it's like not a comedy it's real shit but <laughs> that boy that boy I'd be dying but, did, like, did you ever watch like Naked Gun Gumbay, yeah yeah Gumbay I loved too. all that shit yeah see I'm not it's hard for me to just name off the top right but Hot Shots Naked Gun that slapstick shit I love that shit too shit you know? like, I like that shit <laughs> Well, now, now, one of your all-time, if you could think about it, I think only, I could only think about three right now. All-time favorite Christmas comedies. Christmas comedies, fuck. I would say Ernest Saves Christmas. Uh, damn, man, Christmas comedies, fuck. <laughs> it's like a quiz show. Like, I can't uh, come up with the answers right now. Uh, fuck, homie, I don't know, I'll give man. you a hint. He got two. Do you remember that one? No. Arnold, Jingle All the Way. Oh, oh, Jingle All the Way. Yeah, I just watched that too, man. I like that movie. <laughs> I like that movie. When he's trying to get the toy, the Turbo Man. Yeah. You know, it's funny because because you know how he, uh, the the women hit him when he's in the mall and he goes, "I'm not a pervert. I just want Turbo Man doll." One day, my brother quoted that, but he quoted it backwards. He said, "I don't want Turbo Man doll. I'm a pervert." <laughs> I thought that shit was pretty hilarious. If remember when Arnold Schwarzenegger did that one where he was, that fool got pregnant? Oh, wow. <laughs> that shit was yeah. Funny. That shit was hilarious. That shit was hilarious. Well, fast, old fool, being and uh, and Christmas Vacation, Chevy Chase. Oh, yeah. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's definitely, definitely. Classic. Yeah, that's classic. That's, I watch that every Christmas. And uh, also Bill Murray, Scrooge. Scrooge. That, that one, another classic. I watch that every Christmas. Uh, another one is, I like the Home Alones, the one and two. The Home Alones, yeah, I like yeah. those too. Uh, uh, I think that, as a matter of fact, I think that was the first time that uh, I've ever seen Donald Trump in a damn movie. Oh, he that's did a right. Little cameo. Oh, you gonna bring that fool up? No, <laughs> <laughs> hey, today ain't nobody talking nothing because everybody got their checks. So I know, right? They're, they're like, like hey, thank you, puppy. <laughs> I like oranges. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, w- w- now, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you're for, originally from San Fernando Valley? That's where I was born, yeah, okay. yeah, but uh, I was still young when we moved back to, because my mom, most of my family's from Oxnard, okay. which is like, you know, an hour north from San Fernando Valley, and uh, but that's where I was born, we lived there in an apartment when I was, uh, when I was little, and then, uh, and then we moved, and then we moved to Ventura County, where that's where mostly where I grew up, you know, I lived in Oxnard, Camarillo, high school in Ventura, and then I spent over, probably over 15 years in, in, in the Bay, in San Pancho, in San Francisco, Okay. And uh, now I've been back. Now I've been back in LA for almost eight years now. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, now what, 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 why the move from out here to to the Bay Area? Well, the, I've always had family up there, and then we would spend every Thanksgiving up there. Like I had family up there in in, in a in a in in the Bay Area, so we would just go and just me and my my immediate family, we would go spend every Thanksgiving up there. And so eventually, I was like, ah, fuck, you know. And when uh when I finished right at the towards the end of high school. I kind of just was just like wanting to, you know, make a move instead of, cause a lot of, I mean, a lot of my homies was kind of getting stuck in the, you know, you just, you know, either a lot of fools are just having kids, first of all, like, you know, mm-hmm. fools are getting pregnant left and right. And then I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> and then luckily, I, you know, a right, couple right, near right. misses, but <laughs> I didn't get anybody pregnant. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to just go up there, you know, and I, I lived with my cousin my cousin, uh, Chris Sonic, shout out to you, homie. I uh, lived, lived over there and some other homies. And then I kind of, and then I got a lady and I lived with her for a while, but yeah, yeah, I just went up there and I went to school. I went to school up there, I went to San Francisco State. Oh, okay. And then, uh, wow. yeah. What, what, what high school did you attend out there? In where? In, uh, in the Bay Area? Or what? With the Bay Area? No, no, in, yeah, I, went, I just went to college there. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, I had to finish uh, high school there because I went to a Catholic high school in uh, in uh, Ventura. So that's where, like, but the religion classes, you know, they, don't, they didn't accept them. I was trying to go get into school, get into college. So I had to... Okay. You know, take uh, some uh, extra classes. At growing up, you playing sports? Yeah, homie, baseball. Played Hell baseball. Yeah. Who's your team? Played football. Played. I mean, I. It's you know what? As much as I'm a fa- you know, obviously I'm a fan of who I grew up watching, but but uh, I'm a baseball fan, man. I love going to every park, every stadium, and then you know I love baseball. Like I know the rules, mm-hmm. I know the game, 
So when I see fools getting all catting off on each other and like, you know, Angel fans on Dodger fans and Giants fans on, you know, they just that. I'm like, calm down, homie. You don't play for the team, all right? Like, you know, you're wearing some fool's name on your back and you don't, you don't even, he never even met you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but, but I, I love baseball. Homie going out there, you need some C's and just, I'll go to fucking, I'll watch a do, softball do, do, game. Do you chill. have a favorite team or not? What's that? Do you have a favorite team or not? I mean. Or you don't really want to say I don't. I mean, I mean, of course I'm. Root, I, of course I root for my local teams, only you know. But but uh, I'll say this. I was like, I would, you know, when dang, when game seven, that was a bummer, homie. And I was at. It was like a. It was a Clipper game. Uh -huh. We all went down there to LA Live, you know, and it was that game that fucking lost to the uh, to that to the Astros. Oh, okay. And then you know, which is now like a fucking thing they cheated or whatever. It's like right. damn, those motherfuckers, but. But I loved that little full Altuve, you know? Okay. And I was more bummed when they got caught cheating. I was like, oh, man, what a bad look for little homies, man. Because yeah. he was like, when I see a little homie succeed like that, because I'm a little homie, I'm like 5'6", five, 5'6 six, five, six and a half when I got my Cortez on. But uh, yeah. but Altuve, that fool's like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, and then he's like dominating, getting bombs and that. So I was like, yeah, the little homie, you know what I mean? I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to beat the Dodgers, but at the same time, when he got caught cheating, I was like, oh, man, what a bad look for the little homies, man. Right, it's right. just to help me to shine, you know, we always like, we have so much to overcome already, but now, now, now staying in the Bay Area, uh, did you become a Raiders fan or a 49ers fan? Nah, I mean I'm a I'm a I've always been a Raiders fan. Okay, you know what I mean yeah yeah, but you know I don't like you know I don't say f the Niners or f the Rams or whatever. <laughs> like what's interesting is the new Rams logo. I don't know that one's like. But even Eric Dickerson, a Hall of Fame Ram, he's like, have, have you seen the new logo? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. nose looks like, yeah, it's like, all right, we get it. We're getting, we're, yeah, we're getting rammed, we get it, you know? But it's like, you don't have to put a penis right there, man. There's kids that go to these games. Yeah, exactly, bro. But, it, uh, it, that shit was fucking hilarious. That, that actually turned into a, like a meme. Like uh, so, so somebody actually posted the, the Rams logo. Oh, what the, what the, what the homie <laughs> That shit was hilarious, bro. <laughs> I mean, it straight up looks like a penis. I mean, it's like, they it, gotta change it. I, mean, I, I don't I know. know, maybe not. Like. Oh well, I I ellos pues. Now now uh, growing up in uh, a Latino home and a Mexican home, um, what type of uh, would you say comedians did you grow up listening to? Oh man, I mean, my mom and dad were like diehard music fans, comedy fans. They always had stand up. They always had jams playing. You know, ranchera salsa, old school, old school funk. It was like a religion to them. You right. know what I mean, like like music and comedy was like their way of getting through life you know and just trying to stay positive and da 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 and so you know we always watch the living color every sunday like religiously we watch culture clash you know they would let me watch stand they would let me watch richard Pryor, eddie murphy george carlin you know paul rodriguez was obviously he paul rodriguez was the first one i saw look like me that was like damn yeah. was doing an hbo special you yeah. know and he was he was killing it yes you yes. know and just like damn well that's what's up you know like <laughs> And so that, that was like a big inspiration. We would always watch Saturday Night Live, you know, all that shit. Anything yeah. comedy, they always had on. My mom and dad always had it on in the house. That's dope. And then the jams, homie, you know? So the jam. there was always that type of energy, you know? Like, hey, let's laugh, let's dance, let's, <laughs> let's live, homie. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to get through this, <laughs> you know? Because even when they were struggling, like, the, their, their answer to that was just like, fuck it, we're going to get through it. Like, fucking put some jams on. Right, exactly. Like, you know, That'll work. That'll work. Now, hey, you a uh, lot of brothers and sisters or? Just one sister. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, my dad pulled that'll out work. good. Yeah, hey, hey, and you're the younger, uh, the older brother. The, I'm the older brother. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll work. So, like, at, at what point in time would you say, or um, you decided to get into comedy? Like, it's, I want to kind of dabble in this. Around how old were you when you, when you would say you wanted to start? Oh man, I didn't start till I was, I think I was 25. Okay. 24, 25. But I always knew I wanted to do it. You know what I mean? Like, it was always, I was always class clown, that fool. You know, and. Uh, I would even do little shows for my familia. Like I would just get get a, I would do characters, and I found a, a sprinkler head in my dad's work truck. You know, it's like it almost looks like a microphone. Uh -huh. And you know, and at the time they couldn't afford to buy me like you know equipment or nothing. So I just I just I found this sprinkler head, and I'll go and be like, all right, I'm gonna put on a show, and they would turn on the TV like, all right, there he goes, all right, what do you got right now? I mean, well, you know, and I would do some stupid shit or whatever. So I was always doing that, and then uh, we we used to go to church too, and I'll perform at church. So I was got, always used to being on stage and being a performer and, right. blah, blah, blah. and then eventually one day I said, fuck it, I'm going to go hit one of these open mics, you know, and then I just, and I just started hitting the open mics and then kind of How, how the was crap. it that first time going up there, man? I, I mean, did, were you nervous or do you think you already got rid of the jitters performing in front of your family or was that pretty much the first time in front of an audience and how, what was the reaction? Oh, homie, I was nervous as fuck. I had to get drunk, homie. I was, in, I was like... 
And it was like at this laundromat slash cafe. There was like fucking nine people sitting out there okay. waiting for me. And I'm sitting in the back like, oh, so oh, shit, I'm about to go up I'm next on the list, you know? I was, And all I did was go up there and t- I told like a diar- diarrhea jokes for like five minutes, you know? Because that's all you get, like an open mic, it's five minutes. I was like, yeah, you know, diarrhea, we all got to do with it and this and that, you know? But I got some laughs though, you know? I didn't fucking like eat shit or nothing. So I was like, all right, we got something, you know? Wow. And that was that was a so it last this past September that was fifteen years it was fifteen years since that wow. happened you know what I mean fifteen so like, years uh, uh, <laughs> that's crazy th- th- now did you happen to have any uh, footage of that like did anybody record you like I, I, I got so I got some old footage yeah locked away somewhere I probably would never want no, nobody to see that <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and how, how soon after that uh, did you continue like. You know, let me try it again. Let, let me sign up again. Like, 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 how does a comedian uh, uh, find work or uh, how would you say, does he hit up an agent? Does he hit up a manager? Does he hit up another uh, uh, comedian? Yeah. Does he go to a comedy store? Like, like, how, how does one uh, do that? So I, my best advice to when, when younger comics come up to me and ask me for advice like that, like they're, they ask all the things they should be asking right away. Immediately they're like, hey man, how do I get an agent? Or how do I get a writer? And it's like, I was, I was asking those questions and you should be, but... And everybody has their own lane, you know, somebody yes. can get a stick or a gimmick and get in that way or whatever. But my thing was, I was just like, fuck it. I'm not, you know, because in Hollywood, you know, it gets a little crazy, especially yes. being being Latino. You know, we got to work twice as hard yes. than, than some people. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. Or it's just all about nothing. So some people will get on me like, you need to show face in this fucking town. You need to be waiting outside offices. Let them know that I'm like, hey, fuck, you know, I just want to make shit on me. So... I think the, the 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 best advice like for our young comics would be like if you're trying to do stand up, get a good like three to five minutes, perform in front of your fucking pillows, whatever, get comfortable with it, perform in front of the mirror, and then go out and start hitting those open mics. Right. You know, but it ain't gonna be it happens for some people, they get discovered, da da da. But it's a marathon, homie, it doesn't happen overnight, you know. Like when Cholo Fit went viral for me, people thought I just came out of nowhere, but right. I've been doing this shit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Creeper didn't just come out of nowhere. Like the first creeper right. video I did was damn near ten years ago, you know what I mean? But wow. It's just like, but that was the thing that popped for me that was able to bring people out and be like, oh shit, this fool is actually a, a comedian, you know? Yeah. He's not just a fucking whatever. They called it YouTuber, you know? I don't even yeah. know. Like, yeah, yeah. It was just like, which is like a thing where, you know. Now, now when, when you started performing again, uh, family, friends go and support you, or you just did it all on your own? Yeah, no, no, no. I'll get, <clears throat> man, love, familia, that, that's, that's, the, that's always been my inspiration, you know what I mean? To oh. do what I do. Because, like, you know, like, I'm not, like, we grew, mom, I saw my mom and dad struggle growing up, yes. you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I grew up in the projects and I got fucking da-da, but, you know, you know, hood shit is hood shit, We're, no matter where you're from, there's going to be some similarities, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, I went through my wannabe stages, yeah, I got my ass beat, yeah, I got fucked with, my pops is a, a old school homie, you know, like, he always had a low rider, he always had Chuck Taylors, Dickies, you know, he's always just defending his shit, but he was a hardworking man and he was a father to me, you know what I mean, and he still is. You know what I mean? But he represented to the fullest. You know awesome. what I mean? He's like, I'm fucking Chicano, homie. And that's that's all he knew. Right. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, he wasn't like like Dickies and Chuck Taylors. Those were just close to him. Like, this is just who I am. Right. And that shit, and, you know, but he would always like tell me like, hey, me, you work hard, you respect people. Like, you know, fucking, you know, be about your shit, da, da, da. You know, he was always there to, to, to guide me and shit. So, and my mom, she, she's she's crazy, man, but she's, they're still married. They celebrated 40, 40 years of marriage. That's awesome, man. That's but she's awesome. a, but you know, they're, they're just damn, she's she's funny, homie. My dad, he would try to tell a little dad jokes here and there, but he's more just like a chill, like, you know, homie like that, you know. <laughs> My mom would be fucking, she clowns, homie, like she, <laughs> she's the funny one. But, but, you know, we were always joking around in the house and all that. So, and they were always trying to help people too. Like, even though they didn't have much, like growing up when, when uh, we moved, you know, we moved to, a, you know, a three bedroom house, one yes. story. Nicole said, which to us, like the rest of our family, that was like, oh shit, they got, a, they got a, yeah, they got a three bedroom house. Watch out, you know, da da da. <laughs> Even though, you know, fuck, they they were always in over their heads. Like the power would be getting turned off. The bank would come take pictures of the house because they're getting ready to take that shit. They're trying to do too much. And my mom would go out there in her chanclas and her pajamas, like, fuck you, you're not fucking taking my fucking house. And I'd be like, mom, chill. They're just doing their job, you know. They're just taking pictures and it's like, fuck that, you know. But just see that to see that fire in them to see them overcome that. And to see how much of a, a role uh, uh, like music and comedy played in, in, in getting through that, it really is a powerful thing, man. You know right. what I mean? Right. So it's like, 
the the whole like what I do on stage I feel is an extension of that. It's an extension of my familia and and and, and the struggles that they went through and how they got through that was through laughter and positivity. You know what I mean? So that's why that's that's my lane. You know what I mean? And that's why. You know, Creeper's all about Creeper's Creeper. He comes from a real place, homie. But he's also like, fuck that. I'm about positive vibes. I don't got no time for hate, homie. You know what awesome. I mean? Awesome. That shit just deflects off. Like, shh, 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 shh. all right, let's go represent. You know what I mean? Awesome. You know, and the reason why I, I ask these questions about your background, your upbringing, is because uh, a lot of times I want people to see, and for myself, to see what possibly shaped and molded you to who you are now as far as who you are up on stage and who you are as a person. You know, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I grew up with five brothers and four sisters, and I, and I usually share this. My brothers all played like funk and rock, classic rock. Well, back then it wasn't classic, it was just rock. Mm -hmm. It became classic rock now. My sisters would play New Wave, uh, disco, and my dad would play Los Panchos and my mom like cumbias. I became a DJ and I learned how to play everything. You know, today you have people that tell you, well, what kind of DJ were you? Were you just a hip hop DJ? If you wanted to get hired, you had to play everything. You mm -hmm. know, everything. Because if you want to, if you want to play at a quinceanera, at a wedding, at a house party, <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah, you got to play you gotta cover everything. All that shit, yes, yeah. yes. So yes, uh, uh, so that's why I asked these questions to see, you know, your upbringing. Now, you know what? Here's an interesting question. Uh, growing up, did you watch any uh, Mexican comedians like from Mexico? Not, not much. I mean, you know, Chespiritu, you know, yeah, yeah. Chapulín, all that. Uh, Chavo del Ocho. Yeah, yeah, I watch all that. You know, my dad still watches, uh, you know, the Platano homie. The, the, <laughs> yeah, my dad loves that fool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I did, wa I did watch it in Spanish. And my Spanish ain't great, you know what I mean? But I've been trying to polish it up just so I could maybe do some stand-up in Spanish. But That'll work. But That'll uh, work. it was definitely on, and always on in the house. And then... After school, I always went to my grandma and grandpa's house. You know, my grandpa's from Zacatecas. Okay. And so it was all Spanish in the house. And then, you know, uh, it was always uh, any, all the, anything on the Spanish channel that was comedy was there, which is, you know, ba basically, you know, Chespiritu and all that was dominating the, the airwaves right. at that time, I feel, right. when I was little. Right. And then anytime uh, Walter Mercado came on, my grandma would shut me up and, you know, that fool would come with his nails and da da da. But, there's Dude, a, that shit was fucking hilarious. I saw a meme, no disrespect, when uh, Joan Rivers passed away, may she rest in peace, somebody posted up a picture of what the Mercado and said, Joan Rivers, rest in peace, because they come with looks him. Oh, that's fucked up. That, that, <laughs> that shit was hilarious, bro. And I, mucho, I, mucho amor. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that. Now, growing, my dad was a very interesting individual, and I always, I like to tell people stories about my dad. Uh, he's no longer with us, but uh, him and my mother have, well, have gone on. And uh, thank you. My father is the one that introduced me to comedy. Like he's the one that introduced me to comedy too. From uh, Cantinflas to Capolina to Resortes, Calaviaso, you know, a bunch of like Spanish and then English ones like Bob Hope, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Abbott and Costello, you know, uh, uh, and, and so, so on. And he also introduced me to music. My dad was one of the guys in the 70s, the, one of the few guys that I knew that had a camcorder. So he actually filmed me, uh, and I wasn't even one years old, so I still have that footage, you know. But my dad, so I got a lot from him, uh, um, and then my mom, pretty much my toughness. My toughness came from my mother. But uh, the reason why I say that is because watching Juanita Carmelita, I heard you say one time that that actually started, or, or you emulate your mother a lot. In that yeah, character. oh yeah. You know, so, but, sure. but we'll get into that in the next half. But uh, now, did uh for a comedian when you first started were you still working and doing comedy or did you just go full-time into it oh no no i was working man yeah yeah and then there was a there was a time when i like i had qu quit a job or i got like, i got laid off and then i was like all right well i'm a, you know i collected unemployment and i was just hitting mics and i feel like it helped me hone my craft but then eventually i was broken and a good homie of mine let me sleep on his couch for like a year and a half for real yeah my homie gil shout out to gil homie we watching this <laughs> Yeah, but uh, since then, I've showed him love and repaid him back. So right on, Obi, thank you for letting me sleep on your couch for a year and a half. But uh, but it's because he saw the, he believed in my talent. You know, I had yeah. a lot of homies that believed. Yes. But they just saw, like, you know, because fools that don't know the game, they they see you and they're like, well, if he's that funny, how come he's not on Comedy Central? How come he's not on Netflix? You know, da, da, da. When it's like, well, you got to, you know, you got to you gotta pay your they dues, homie. And, and uh, you know, and there's just a lot of things that get involved in that. It's a narrow, it's a, it's a long process to get some get something yes. to a TV screen. You yes. know what I mean? And it's uh, like there's a quote, and I, I think I said it last week or, or a week before, and it's so true. A lot of people want to take the. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. 
You know, yeah, yeah. you have to pay dues on the way up. But a lot of people don't want to do that. And I think in this generation, speaking about rap music, there's a lot of rappers out there that have never paid any dues. They just release a, a video on YouTube and they go viral and they think, you know, their head is this big because they have, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, a million Same views. Same thing happens in comedy. Yeah. Really? Oh, see, yeah. See, I don't know that world. Right. But, you know, like, do you ever meet comedians that maybe are not really fully there, but their head is this fucking huge? Oh, of course. I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, same in the rap game, I guess, because it's, you know, there's a lot of ego involved, you know, and yeah. it's a lot of, you know, uh, for me, I, I, you know, I try to keep, you know, I keep it cool with everybody. And I, I, I'll never knock anybody's hustle. Good. If Good you're job. selling the tickets, you're selling the tickets, homie. Yes. You know, but that's, that's the thing amongst like comedy clubs, like a, a, the, you, a YouTuber will have like a video that goes viral. Yes. And then they're just like, oh, I'm going to do a show at this comedy club and they'll sell it out like that. Awesome. But then you go see them and they, they don't really have a live act though. Mm. They're just kind of like, hey, <laughs> so you know me from the videos, right? Like, what's up, you know? Right, right. So, which is, which is all good though. But you know, that, it, like I said, I would never, I would never knock, knock that or hate on that. That's just part of, that's just part of, just part of it. And I'm yeah. sure that's how it is in the rap game too. It is. It like, is. Like, you know, homie has one hit or has a good video and then he's like, oh, back to you, I'll do this. And then. Now, now, now here's an interesting question. And I ask you again, because I don't know this comedy world other than what my father taught me. But as far as you as a comedian, is there hate amongst comedians as well? Unfortunately, yeah, man, there is. But there's also a lot of good people. You good. know, you, you'll find your tribe. I'm sure that's how it is in in any business. But, you know, I, I, when when comics come to me and they're like, hey, that's so-and-so, I was like, hey, I don't even want to hear it, homie, because I don't even want to waste no energy right. on that. Because uh, it's unfortunate sometimes, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit like a shark tank, you know, yes, in yes. the game. And it's like, they feel like it's a competition when really it's like, man, well, there's a whole world out there. Like you're worried about what this fool said when you got this whole world of potential audience that you need it. You need to be putting your energy and trying to tap into that shit rather than like, oh, fuck, you hear what so-and-so said about, you know, duh, duh. So it's like, but, but unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get fools that say this and that, but you know, I just, you know, it's all, you know, I just, you hope for the best. I mean, right, just hope right. that people. Right. You know, it's the same thing. People, you know, envy haters. Unfortunately, it's part of the it's part of the part of the world and shit. So okay, now cool. let me ask you this, and I probably already know the answer, but I need to ask DJs. When you're good, you get the chicks. <laughs> okay, when you're a rapper and you're good, well, sometimes no, not so good, but they get the chicks. <laughs> sometimes so no that's one a, can do. Just, but <laughs> do do comedians get the chicks? I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, they're, they're there. It's it's a thing. It's the hype. For me, that hype exists in rap. That hype exists in anything. Any Anytime when you're getting that type of energy, you know, it adds to your whatever, your vibe or the hype, you know, they're there on me. But, you know, I can't just be ran, ramming random high knives after shows and all that. I got, you know, like I said, I'm, shit, I'm before this year, homie. So usually I'm exhausted after shows. Right, right, right. You know, right. and I, I do the meet and greet after his creeper. Like, I know that's going to change now, but... You know, uh, I'll do it for free. And a lot of people want to do the squats, you know. So comedy clubs, you're doing like five, six shows a weekend. One time mm. my host clicked how many squats I did. And it wow. was like 318 or some oh, shit. shit. Dog, I'm, I'm done for like two days after that last Sunday show. Like wow. your boy is 40, homie. I'm in bed. Like I got the I got the ointments and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to come out with my own Cholo Fit ointment. Dog, you yeah, know? exactly. Like, hey, I'm just like, and then you'll be all right. Legs, you know what I'm saying? Tire of bitch. <laughs> but I, but it's like you know it's a real it's a it's a grind homie, but but uh, but yeah 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 anyways man okay before we go to break we got about two minutes but let me ask you this is there a favorite comic that you like to watch oh man i got so many because i'm a comedy fan first you know what i'm saying like i said i grew up my mm -hmm. mom and pop says so just comedy always on but Jim, currently like now Jim Carrey, I mean, any, you know I mean? any, anybody Oh yeah, well Jim Carrey's not really touring as a stand-up. Oh, you mean just watching in Movies, general? Movies, like I say. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, everything. Kevin Hart, Jim Carrey, you know Gabriel Iglesias, George Lopez, like yeah, you know. Uh, let me think who else, man. Damn, I mean there's some Bill Burr, like fucking uh, Joe Coy is another one I really like. He, he kills it on stage, man. Uh, uh, man, there's a lot. Alonzo Bowden, like man, I could go forever. Craig Robinson, who who I tour with, that's my boy. Like he gets on the keyboard and makes it fun. Like you know, dope, I mean, it, it just yeah, it goes he, on and on. Man. Now uh, uh, there's different type of people that like to listen to different type of rap. For an example, my son likes to listen to a lot of freestyle rap. Uh, you know, with guys just going off the top of their head. I like to mm. listen to songs. Now comedians, uh, um, do you just like to listen to stand up? Or like to look at comedy movies or both? Oh, all of it, homie. All Anything of it? that can make you laugh? I mean, shit. 
that's it, homie. That's the medicine right there. That's dope. Like we, I'm, I'm, I'm on like a few like group like threads, you know, and we, we be sending each other videos, especially in this time when you're just like quarantine. But anything that could make you laugh, that, that's an escape in that moment. Man, I could be in the darkest place, like fuck my life and everything. Like I gotta do with this and that. And then somebody sending in front of me, like <laughs> you know, you get to escape. And then you go back to like, oh shit, yeah, my life's a little weird right now. But I, yeah. at least I laughed right there five seconds ago. But, but most you know? people escape uh, when they go to my story because I post up memes every damn day. I, I, you know, if you know what's funny, I've been deleted from Instagram. Like, uh, uh, this is my fifth page now. I've never been able to get four over four thousand followers because my page get deleted because I've been posting up a bunch of funny ass shit uh, on my story, and people report them. What? Yes, they report them. Like I'm thinking, why are you gonna fucking follow if you're gonna report me? But my pages have been deleted, so whatever. Like you're not posting like like porn shit on there. Hell time. no. Oh, okay. no. Only midget porn sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, when we come back, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, the beginning or the origins of Cholo Fit, Creeper, and uh, Juanita Carmelita. And we're going to let everybody know uh, what can they expect from you uh, once this Corona thing is over. Cool? All right. Let's All right do it if you want another beer, let me know. Uh, next break, we're going to bring out the tequila. I mean, so, oh, shit. I mean, hell yeah. So once again, everybody, episode 50, uh, call, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, and let them know that Frankie Quinones, Creeper, Cholo Fit, Juanita Carmelita's in the motherfucking house. God, I got stuck saying that. But all right, see you back in 10 minutes.
the cold tissue. Hey, yo, D, you got a level? D, hit record, man. Lonzo, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You sure? Motherfucker, I'm ready, goddamn! Welcome back, everybody, to Rodeo. No, this shit ain't gonna work. Okay. This shit looks like some panties, but we're supposed to be wearing them now. So, but anyways, uh, you know what? Really quick, Mini Micheladas. This is the plug. Make sure you go get them. Hit them up at Blasto Wear on Instagram. They are delicious. I'm gonna open up at our next break. But uh, without further ado, please allow me to introduce once again my good friend, Creeper, Frankie, Juanita. How are you doing? Good, good, homie. Sure, I'm gonna ask good. you. I'm gonna start off with a question, kind of like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? So, what came first, Juanita or Cholo Fit Creeper? Juanita Carmelita. She was the first. I was already doing stand up, uh -huh. but then she was the first like character that I did on stage. Oh, okay. That's why I, I get you know, cause you know, obviously we come from you know the Latino black community is notoriously like homophobic and shit, and, and then so they, and then they so I have had some folks die. It cracks me up because it's like, you know, some folks will be like, oh, look, he's sold out. He's dressing as a hyena now. Like, and I'm like, homie, I've been doing this. Like, <laughs> I did that before, Creeper. But, dude, that, but, uh, yeah, we're just based off my mom doing the thing and then just me saying, fuck it, you know, like, but, uh, she, uh, yeah, yeah, I love that character, man. And then there's people that they, they're like, you know, yeah, there's some people that love her more than anything, you know, and then, um, but it's like, uh, to me, it's, it's a character, you know right, what I mean? Right. So it's like, it, it, but it's funny to be homie because you see it makes some hint they get uncomfortable you know because because i'll get some g's homie and they sit up front and they want to treat their lady out so they get the vip and they're in the front seats right you right. know they're there to see frankie and creeper then but then i come out fucking you know and then juanita comes out juanita carmelita comes out wearing her wedges and her ross pants all tight and everything like what's up you know i'm here to party you know and you see these fools get uncomfortable. <laughs> i'll never forget those as well you're like in denver 
and he was a G. I mean, he's like, you know, they're enjoying the show, but he got so uncomfortable. He even reached, and they make you put your phone in a bag, you know, or you lock oh, it okay. up. Right, 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 right. But he, he even tried to reach for that just to like look, try to look for something to look at because he didn't want to look up at me. <laughs> but I was like, that shit is so funny now, to me. Now, man, but. When you first started doing that, were you just doing the voice or did you come out with the wig and the dress or? Well, the thing was, I was in my in my stand up. I, I do like a lot of story t storytelling, do voices. I do my mom's okay. voice, all that. So then I, so then I slowly started working on this character, and then um, you know, and then we started doing video. We, you know, we did. There's videos of her on online from like 12 years ago. You know, that are up wow. still up on YouTube. And then so, she's been she's been out out there for a while. But like uh, to me, it's it's a uh, it's it's fun to do because it's like I even trip out on myself. Like like. Um, you know, some fools like it, it gets some fools uncomfortable, or whatever. But some fools are just like, ah, oh, even I, nah, I know you do. She's funny, dog. Like da da da. Like you know, they are like, or I get, I love it when I get fools after like, hey, dog, I fucking saw you come out dressed as a hyena, and I was like, what the fuck? But you know what? That shit was funny, homie. And I'm like, see, bro, for, take a fucking joke first of all. It is. It just because a homie fucking dress a girl doesn't mean you know, you know, making all these assumptions. But it, honestly, though, it even trips me out because I'll be in the green room during the show, and I gotta be quick, you know, because I gotta change. I do multiple characters in my life show but i even catch myself sometimes look in the mirror and i'm stuffing my chichis and shit and i'll catch myself and i'll look in the mirror and i'm like what the fuck are you doing homie you know what i mean <laughs> like what is your life right now hey you know what i mean right, right. <laughs> but i'm like fuck it because to me once i get in the zone on me i'm not i'm not even thinking of a man dressed as a woman i'm thinking i'm this hyena like i'm this character right you right, know right, like right. And that's it. Like, and I'm here to fucking entertain you. I'm not Frankie anymore. You know, it's just right. like I'm Manita Carmelita. So you know what time it is. You know what I mean? And then so that's that. That's that's what that's how that goes down. And then I just fucking go back, and then I change back up, and then go get in the creeper, and then you know, that's just trying to trying to show the variety. You know. Now, from the time that, if you will, you came up or you thought up Juanita Carmelita, how soon after or how long ago I mean, after did you become uh, creeper cholo fit, and what inspired that? Yeah, creep, Creeper straight up came from my pops, man, and, and my family, my cousins, all my cousins, man, we were like, they were all cholos, and I, I went through my wannabe stage trying to fit in and all that, and and uh, I was the one in the family where my mom and dad, like, they sacrificed as much as they could to make sure we had a better opportunity yes. for, for my sister and I, you know what I mean? And, uh, but, you know, all, all my cousins, all my family, my gra my grandfather who's still alive, he's 92, you know, that, you know, they, they you know, they live in, in, in you know, dangerous neighborhoods man that's what we grew up around and then but the, but i always had i always had guidance in my home you know what i mean and then and then i'm not gonna say i had like all oh, this 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 tough life like my mom and dad like they provided for me but they struggled though you yes. know what i mean like you know so but hey, when you're a kid you don't really think about like you're like oh bologna sandwich is cool like yeah hell yeah you're not thinking oh we're eating this because we don't have no money you're right. just like oh but you know who gives a fuck it's sandwiches and kool-aid like hell yeah right. you know what I mean? it, <laughs> like, it's kind of like growing up poor but not knowing you're poor exactly you know what i mean like you yeah. don't know homie. Right, and then, right. <laughs> like, you comer, you know what are we gonna eat today sopa okay yeah, yeah. you know so they were gonna eat sopa <laughs> right know? right but uh, yeah. um now so from juanita carmelita how long after did uh creeper come like as far as the the, the, Man, just, the character yeah, I would say because when I was do uh, was doing uh, in my stand up, you okay. know, I would do imitate my cousins or my father, or you know, I went through my little wannabe cholo stage when I was like, you know, when you go through your identity, you know, when I'm like, when I was like from eleven to fourteen, you're trying to find out where you are and where you fit fit in. Yes, because I had my mom and dad trying to send me to better schools and they're trying their their best home even though they were broke. You know that that, that that's how how good of a how much they gave a, awesome. gave a fuck about their familia. You know yes. the familia was their priority always. You know what yeah. I mean? And I I'll, I'll, I'll for forever be indebted to them for that. You know what I mean? And so it's like. <laughs> it was like I was just imitating my father who was he always had a low rider still has a low rider my Nino his best friend was president of Vijitos car club in Oxnard for 35 years wow you know what I mean so that the car show culture and, and raza and the Chicano culture you know it, that's where Creeper comes from and my dad was a very positive fool even though he went through his shit homie did his things you know my mom and dad had their ups and downs but they stuck it out and he was always there for me like that fool whooped my ass too, but he was bro calm, calmado about it. Like, hey, homie, you fucked up. Go lay on the bed. You would make me fucking lay stomach down. Sorry, I don't want to put my dad on blast, but because, you know, therapists will probably be like, that's abuse that you should report, you know? But I'm right. like, nah, homie, fuck. I mean, I turned out okay. So right. I think those ass whoopings kind of did a thing, but that fool, but he was real calm. He never reacted 
emotionally. No, that's why they feel like a Stevan kind of reminds me. Stevan's always all calm, you know. I'm talking about Stevan Ori always <laughs> back here, but that's how like my dad's real chill like that. Like he don't ever like my mom. If I pissed her off, she would smack me on the spot. You know, what the fuck you fucking you know da, da, da. that was my mom my my dad would be like hey meanwhile like you fucked up here let's go to your room and he would take his belt off and fucking bomb homie and if i don't he's like you, if you block it you're gonna get two more so fuck i couldn't block it you know sometimes i'll try to put you know magazines in my pants or whatever but that fool would find take them out and then whoop my ass but uh but i'm just saying like that's but he was real positive like he would whoop my ass yeah but then he would sit down with me and be like you know i did that to you right you know yeah. why you're you know why you're crying right now, right? You know why you're you know, yeah. And it's because you fucked up, and this is it, and that's not how life works, and this is it. Right. So it was like, and you know, I know some you know, people or white people might be like, oh my gosh, that's abuse. He struck you and just out of nowhere like that, and there was wealth on your ass. You were bleeding, and I'm like, yeah, but fuck, you know, I fucking. And I didn't end up in jail or fucking get a random high not pregnant, you know. So exactly. They must have did something. You know? Must have, <laughs> you know what, Bunny Man? Uh, with me, every ass whooping that I got, I deserved. I know I deserved it because I era un pinche diablo. I did a <laughs> bunch of bullshit bullsh at home. You know, uh, everybody would always say, like, out of 10 kids, I was the fucking worst one. And I get it. I understand. <laughs> So, you were the black sheep. Yes, yeah. yes. But I will say this, and I know there's a lot of uh, women out there watching. I feared my mother more than I did my father. My mother, all she had to do was show me those fucking eyes, bro. Oh, God. And I'm like, put up water, please, please. Like, I knew I fucking had it coming, you know? Yeah. But like my dad, he was real calm like that. One time, I shamefully admit, I was a teenager, and I tried to stand up with my to, to my dad. I thought he was old already. Oh, you know? homie. Yeah, dude. He put that wisdom fucking oh, shit dude. on you. No? He, he said, I, I was in the bathroom shaving, and I was blasting the fucking radio. I was like 17, 18 years old. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 17, 18. I know what all these fools don't know. I know exactly. Okay. So, so I'm blasting music, and he says, Bajale, turn it down. And I was like, get out. So I closed the door, and he held it. He said, Bajale. And I was like, no, what are you going to do? I try to stand up to Ooh, him. And he told me, shit. Levanta las manos. He said, put your hands up. The first time he's ever told me that. And I said, what are you going to do? He went, bam. And I go, okay, okay, le bajo. I'll, yeah. turn, it I'll turn it down. <laughs> he fucked hey, me up, bro. Dog, there's a, there's a certain wisdom grip or wisdom punch that they have that it comes from years of experience mm -hmm. that... Where they don't, it, when it hits you, homie, it's almost like an arm wave. Bam! Yeah, on my way. My yes. dad only punched me one time. I mean, he 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 would be very calm and, and and whoop me with a belt. My mom would throw fucking anything at me, homie. Anything. Like anything Chunk, she could find right branch, there. Whatever. Iron, she, manteca, everything. Yeah, she used yeah. to sell vacuums at Sears, and then she uh she worked at a she was a secretary at a chiropractor's office, so she had the little nurse shoes. She would take those off, but they had the big heel. With accuracy, homie, it's a thing. It's a genetic thing that you have it down like, to a why science. Did you learn that? Fuck, you know, yeah. like you got me. Like, like, but, like fucking a, a boomerang. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like there's got to be some training facility somewhere. It, exactly. Okay <laughs> so now the outfit uh, uh, for Cholo Fit, uh, um, how was that inspired? How did you come up with it? Or do you have different ones for him? Because I usually see the tank top, the shorts, or is that just a summer? Yeah, look? no. So. The, the the cutoff sweats and the tank top that's that's his thing homie we could go through it right now i'll show you the process but Hell yeah because he's in there right now right but yeah he's right here in this bag right. i got him a to me bag watch out <laughs> he's doing all good now uh but uh probably not for long though because no more live shows i'm not making money huh. but uh but no nah, it's all good homie uh but uh what happened was we did a video called cholo whisper yes which we did it's probably been 10 years now, but then we re we remade it. We did a remake of it maybe, I don't know, maybe six years ago now or something. And that's when Creeper got, he got, they rescued him from the CRS, the Cholo Rescue Services, this couple, you know, Lucy wow. and Steve. And uh, they got him from the CRS and they said, hey, we're, you know, trying to help this, help, help him out. But he was having, he was catting off. He was having trouble getting acclimated. Like, fuck that, you know, like, you know, so they were having problems with him. So based off, you know, Dog Whisper, the Cesar Milan shit, it was a Cholo Whisper. So they're having problems with their Cholo. So then Cholo Whisper comes, which yes. is played by my homie from uh, Riverside. Shout out to Darren Villegas, homie. Uh, he played Cholo Whisper. So he had like the, the stick and the long hair with the bandana. Like he was like one of those spiritual homies. Yes. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> and so he showed the family how to deal with Creeper and why he's having these troubles going, you know, from prison to here. And so people were like, oh, you got to make another one. And that one did, you know, that one got like half a million views. And that was like the most 
I had ever gotten. So I was like, oh, shit. So it was exciting for us. But then we're like, damn, what's the follow up? Like, this fool's got to get a job, you know, like he's going to have trouble getting a job. And then he was already lightweight doing some yard workouts in, in Cholo Whisper. I don't know yes. if I remember he was doing push ups. And then so I was like, oh, I know he could, he could teach a workout class in the backyard and just have fools from the neighborhood. Oh, wow. Uh, teaching them. And then so I'm telling you, though, like 99 percent of that first video, Cholo Whisper, was like improv because we were at my house. And then the OG that we do the Cholo metrics with, that's my dad, you know. And my dad had just happened to stop by my primo's house to, to um, he got some tamales and some whatever, some asada from him. He goes, hey, mijo, you, got, you guys filming a video? I got some tamales and asada, I'm gonna drop it off. And then so he he stopped by and then my primo's were, they were like barbecuing somewhere else. Like, cause they were just like, oh, he's just using the house to do a video. But they happened to stop by. And then, uh, and then so the people that were there was like, hey, you know what, get behind me, you guys. We're doing like this. We came up with this thing and just do it and just follow me. And then we did the first Cholo fit that we put that out homie and then i mean it was it just shot through the roof i was it was like wow those that week was crazy for me i mean it was just like it was like what the fuck homie? i was getting these two fools no joke on me in australia these australia they probably don't even want to know what a cholo is eh? you know right, what i right, mean right they sent me a picture these two white boys obviously they're australia well i don't know there's probably different colors in australia but these fools were white uh, and they were squatting with a baby Joey, a baby kangaroo in uh -huh. between them, making it look like the kangaroo was doing a squat too. And they sent that to me like, hey, from Australia, mate, Cholo fit, yeah, you know, good. And I was like, what the fuck, homie? <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit blew my mind, dog. I right. was like, and then I was getting messages from like Thailand and fucking, Can you know, and, and it's funny too, because in Canada, some of those will say, hey, you know, like, hey, what's up? Or like, oh, you're a hoser, hey, or da da, hey, you know, so, <laughs> so they latched onto that, even right. like the fact that I say, hey, like, hey, what's up, hey? So yeah, I had getting messages from Canada, like those are doing the spot, sending it to me. Wow. Olympians, professional baseball players, hip hop artists, athletes, all within, like, I mean, like that, man, they fell in love with it. Like Miguel, the R&B artist, you know, his French Montana, all these fools were reposting the shit on their Instagram and all that. And that's when it just became, some fool messaged me from his hospital bed. He had four heart attacks in a row. Wow. And he's like, thank you, homie. I can't stop watching this. I can't stop watching all your videos. Like you're making me, I, I, you know, this is my, I don't know how much longer I got, but right. I'm hanging on. And thank you for that. It was like shit like that. You know, like, I'm wow. like, damn, homie. That's when I was like, all right, this shit. This is my character. This is what I'm going to, how I'm going to continue, if you will. You know? Yeah. Or just, yeah, yeah. Just so. Be, be, because uh, up to that point, uh, you were doing stand up. You were doing uh, different characters, Juanita, and then when you did the the the, the Cholo Whisper, from there you did the the Cholo Fit, and it just took off. Yeah, and then okay. it took off from there. Wow. So after that blew up, then I was able to touring became a thing because before I was just you know, and I still open for my boy Craig Robinson, who's been a great mentor of mine, good homie of mine, um, you know, and he's been a great supporter. Um, but but you know but before that i was just doing you know i was still i was already kind of like growing little by little like uh -huh. doing casinos and shit like that but when the troll of it thing blew up and then i had to develop an act for creeper on stage because you know i couldn't show up to these places and just do my stand-up like fools want to see creeper you know and, and yeah. i wanted to do creeper because i love i have like six characters that i've been working on for 10 years but obviously creepers the one and that's also my favorite because i it's it's nostalgic for me you know what yes. i mean like I feel my I feel my father in me. I feel my familia in me. I feel the I feel raza in me. I feel the culture. I feel, you know, like everybody knows this fool. You know what I mean? Yes. Like when I meet people in person, especially when I'm dressed as creeper, like when they came and say what's up to me, I could feel the feel the shit in their eyes, like that we already fucking known each other. Because yeah. they probably they watch so much of my shit and been supporting and sharing and having so many laughs in their fucking pad that I'm like, what's up, homie? Let's fucking kick it, eh? Like, thanks for coming out and supporting. Like, that's, that's my fucking lane right there, homie. Like, I'm trying to spread laughter and love and just the fact that I could do it on a Chicano culture platform yes. is a blessing, you know what I mean? Because even my mother and father, we were having a discussion because, you know, the, with the LA Originals coming out on Netflix. Yes. You know, shout out to my homie Esteban. Who Esteban. Gave me a ride here because my car's in the shop. So thank you, Esteban. But He's all famous now, so he don't want to talk, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Esteban Oreo was, was an inspiration to me, man. Like, I've yes. been a fan of this fool for over 20 years, you know. Like yes. I said, I, I, you know, I'm going to be 40 this year. So I was, like, 19, 20 going to this fool's shows, even too afraid to, like, say what's up to him in person. Even when I, when I was living in San Pancho, I'll never forget this. I went to one of his shows, 
and uh and and i was like i was just pumped to see like the, the his photographs up and then the the people that were there to support it you know right because not only was it raza it was like everybody and robin williams was there no shit. robin williams homie and he's one of my all-time favorites and inspiration and so that was one of the i would say a motivating moment where like i was like man there ain't no fucking i was like you don't have to have no stick or no angle just be you homie be you and you're a fucking chicano and this is how you grew up your dad was always driving you to school and the little league practice in a fucking lowrider wearing dickies and fucking chuck taylor's homie yeah. and there's no reason that you can't rep that and be proud of that you know and moments like that help me realize that when you get fools like robert williams or other white people like oh my gosh we love this chicano culture we can't get enough you know and it's like you know and i think it's <laughs> and i think you know i think that's a good thing so seeing that is like even like my mom and dad seeing the success of la originals was like they were like we me were like this is like we never thought we would see this in our lifetime to see chicano culture represented like that so all that you know guys like george lopez Paul rodriguez they open lanes in comedy like yes. that but also like the success of the crossover of like of uh you know other chicano art yes. Cause a lot of times, oh, people think Chicano, oh, they want to associate it with with gang life, or you know, or cholos, they want to immediately go gang life violence, like negative and that negative train. But really, there's an art, there's this expression, there's a thing, and comedy is a part of that. You know, right. photography, painting, you know, tattoos, fucking art. That you know, it makes yes. you feel something, homie, when you Absolutely. see it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so I, so I try to bring that vibe. To, sorry, I'm fucking rambling on now. No, no, no like, go for it. Keep going, keep going. Full surprise in the comments, like, all right, well, maybe we get it. Like, shut up right now. Like, <laughs> you know, it, you know <laughs> I, I'm going to say something. This being the 50th episode, you know, first of all, I'm thankful that you're here and that I get to celebrate, I almost said 50 years, uh, um, uh, 50 episodes with you. There's only a few people that I've actually been nervous to interview uh, because I'm not a podcaster. I didn't go to no fucking school. We just turned it on and went. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But there's only been a few people that I, I've been nervous to interview. Uh, today, I was very excited for you. But I'll tell you what, one of the guys that I was nervous for was Esteban when he came here. Because oh, yeah, I yeah. know the history that this man carries, you know. And uh, um, I, I know I've been knowing cartoons since so we've been teenagers. But Esteban, when he came here, there was just so much. That's why I watched that documentary three times. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's all repeat at the crib. Yeah, and, and I think it should... Could have been longer you know and i'm sure there probably is more coming but to be able to see rasa on netflix it, it's awesome man oh, it's, it's, awesome. it's number five right now the thing yeah, yeah it's just a thing uh, yeah and for people it, that it, haven't seen it go to netflix la originals check it out and if you also want to see uh my interview tony vision esteban is my guest and i i had the opportunity to to interview him as well but yeah. uh so you were going to show us a little bit of something oh yeah yeah but to, just to talk on that, yes. you're like you were nervous to nervous Seven. Yeah. There's shows I've been to. I mean, this was years ago. Now, now I'll say what's up to him, like or whatever. He gave me a ride over here. But, but uh, those times when I, I got too nervous to say what's up, I'm like, fuck, there he is. Like, I all bought his book and his merchandise. Like, hey. <laughs> you know. But then no food. Like, I don't know. He looks like, uh, you know, like. <laughs> and now he's the homie. Like, dog. It's like it's a blessing. You know what I mean? Yes, because is. I'm proud of this fool, man. And he's he's leading the way. That'll work. That'll work, man. But yeah, but but on that shit, like being nervous and yes. like I've been literally been at his shows and chicken out. I'm just going to be like, hey, look, I bought your book. Can I get a picture? Or like, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> fuck it, fool. Now, now, now let me ask you this: Have you ever performed? And I'm sure it probably is. And you just thought to yourself, "Fuck, I fucked up." Like hell uh, yeah, hell okay. yeah. Oh. We've all had our worst sets, every okay. stand-up comic, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. And a lot of people don't know, I come from the stand-up game, that's where I started, you know what I mean? And and at the time I started, I was I was kind of wilding out, you know, we were like, you right. know, kind of, I, I, I was running with the crowd and they're still my homies, hey, Philly guy, everybody, damn, we were, we were slanging, you know, pills when ecstasy popped off and, you know, the late 90s and all that <laughs> shit and... We were out there partying, homie, you right, know, but I was right. still going to school and stuff because I still had that guidance, but I was still kind of like, hey, look, let's fuck around a little bit, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you we had to throw in that little hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we were partying, but luckily we survived that shit. Oh, you know, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And we did our thing. But I want to give a shout out to my homegirl, Amanda Lopez, uh, Trevor Trainer. You go to Amanda Lopez Photo, man. She's a good homie, homie of mine, one of my sisters. Pure love. She she's a another photographer, successful one, but she mentored Esteban for a long time. 
and she was the one that was like, man, you and Esteban will get along. I'm like, oh, really? Like, fuck, that's like, you you know him? She's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be his a, apprentice or whatever. And I was like fucking tripping out. But she was like, you know what? He's funny. I was like, he's funny? Really? Because every time you see him, you just, oh, you know, yeah, my photos, you know, yeah, that's what I do and everything. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. You know, and, and so, you know, I thought, dang, he's funny like that. Sure enough, we ended up connecting. You know, I had to, I had to build myself up to get in the same room with him but eventually right, right. i got in there and then we fucking vibed out homie and i'm like fuck now i just hell yeah because i'm all like how i am like hey what's up and he's all calm so it's a good balance you know what i mean right, so right right hopefully something worry. comes from it or maybe yeah we might be enemies in a couple months i don't know <laughs> homie he's gonna have me like that and i and i had like hey come on first no, like that. but anyways i'll i'll show you the or sorry homie we gotta do the no, 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 good. Fuck, you see, give me that tequila, homie. Fuck, no, man. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to take some shots. Sorry, I me. haven't been out of the house in like 12 days, homie, so, you know. <laughs> it's okay, everybody. If you start stuttering like me, uh, we've had a little bit of uh, Don Julio, and I got some Patron in the in the fridge. Oh, so, shit. So, 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 so we're good. But it is it is hot in here. I'm not trying to just flex and show the... Hell yeah. <laughs> I see but, the tripas. Uh, I'm going to show you the... I'm gonna, yeah, that, you see the treasure tripas, homie? También, watch out. <laughs> So this is my process, homie. So when I get ready to do a show or an appearance or whatever, que la chingada, there's not gonna be no appearances no more because can't shake nobody's hand. Oh. Uh, You're gonna have to give long distance you know, I hugs. Got, I don't have my, yeah, I didn't bring the sweats and all that, but but there's fools at, at comedy clubs, they trip out because the green room servers, they come in and check on you, hey, anything to drink or whatever. And they'll, and they'll see me, one of my requests is I always need an ironing board in my thing. And when they come in and see me ironing my cutoff sweats, I mean, <laughs> they fucking trip out. They're like, this motherfucker's ironing his sweats and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey, what we gotta get? I used to iron my drawers, so. Yeah, you see, there you go. You know what's up. Yeah, I love ironing, you know, and I think a lot of us love ironing. I take pride in ironing. <laughs> my shirts, my a pants. I love ironing, man. You know? yeah. Hell yeah. No, so, it is. It's a thing. Yeah. I've had homies be like, hey, can you iron that for me? I don't know how to iron. I'm like, what, fool? You don't know how to iron? It's like, almost like it's a fucking skill, homie. It is, homie. Yeah. Dude, when I went through my, when I went to the swap meet and got my first pair of dickies and my thing, my mom was like, oh, hell no. Like, you ain't gonna be no cholo and this and that, you know, but I was trying to fit in with my cousins. And, uh, but my dad was like, nah, nah, let him, let yeah. him. Yeah. And he, but he, he took me to the room and he's like, all right, Mijo, if you're going to do this, you're going to do it right. And you're going to rep this shit. This fool would wake me up at five in the morning, homie, no joke. And he would make me crease my shit, you know, starch it. Like oh, crease, shit. crease the dickies down the middle, tuck in my shirt, crease the white tee up like that. Otherwise he wouldn't let me leave the house. He's like, if that's how you, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. That's right. Dog, I lasted like three weeks, homie. I was like, you can't, I need my sleep, eh? Like, I switched back to, you know, cargo shorts and whatever. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> <laughs> that'll work, that'll work, man. But that fool, that fool, yeah. That I fool. got a lot of homies that took a lot of uh, pictures with you, man. They're like, hey, man, tell him I said, what's up? Like, he's gonna know you, bro. Calm down. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, I'll probably remember that fool. But yeah, I put on the, I always do the hair, even though I shave my head now, because uh, the barbers are all closed. But I used to always, always have a shaved head, so I said, fuck it. I'm losing my hair anyway, so I might as well just keep it like that. So I go like that, homie. And then uh, and then I got my bandana. I still use a... I got backup sweats, but I use the same cutoff sweats, homie, since the shit popped off. And it's, got, it's got holes in it, all kind of shit. But Hell yeah. I'm, like, superstitious like that. I mean, these are my lucky, my lucky cutoff sweats, homie. That'll work. And I go with a bandana like this. Yeah. And that helps with the sweat and everything too, and also just to represent, you know. <laughs> and then so I slowly start becoming this fool, you know. And this is when I feel my my familia, my father, you know. Shout out to my to my primos, Ruben, Johnny, Manuel, you know what's up, homies. That'll work. Those are those are my real G cousins that were like, you know, even Junior, the Barreto family, Rudy. Thank you guys, eh? Those fools will whoop my ass when I went through my wannabe, and I actually got my ass whooped. I have a, oh shit, I forgot to show you, but. I got my ass kicked one time when I was like, no, I'm down. Oh, you're down? Like when I tried to <laughs> rep some shit and I fucking got 12, right, right. I got 12 staples in my forehead and I say, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to do comedy instead. But, yeah, uh, instead, huh? <laughs> Now, how many mustaches do you have? Do you have multiple or just one? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I got a, I got a plethora, a plethora. of mustaches. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, I'm sure you get this a lot. A lot of people actually thought that at one point that was your real mustache, right? 
Yeah, when we, and, and, and it was funny too, because once the, the shit went viral and on, on, online people would be like, that mustache is fake. Like, yeah, no shit, homie. Like, <laughs> fuck you, bro. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I got some. I used to have to buy more at a time when I first started. I was, well, for uh-huh. actually for a couple of years, the first two years, I was using glue. Oh, okay. Like, you know, uh, like Elmer's glue or something? Or what? Not <laughs> <laughs> crazy glue? Just, uh, 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 like uh what do you call it fucking uh spirit gum you know the the like like uh for, for eyel- eyelashes or something all that shit like just it's just like makeup glue oh okay but the thing was homie is it was fucking you know when you do comedy clubs you do multiple uh you look like the local taquero now bro <laughs> hey how many tacos that shit I mean, is hard. Hey, the fucking pandemic discount ain't no trip. Exactly. You five tacos right now for a dollar. <laughs> Did you bring the quarantine coupon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you say the quarantine coupon or the discounta? Fuck. Sorry, I'm trying to put this out right, but uh. They can't really tell on 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 camera. It's all good. Oh, okay, then whatever. Uh. But yeah, homie, so. I used to use the glue, but but you, when you do five, six shows at a comic club on a weekend, you know, and then I I, I would do pachanga and I do Juanita Carmita and she has lips, I gotta rub that off and then I put the put the glue on for the mustache and I gotta take that off. So I would start to get like, my skin was breaking out. So oh, it looked shit. like I had like herpes and shit. So, you know, I'd be talking to Hainas and they'd be like, damn, what's that? Like, no, I'm a comedian. I, I have this mustache that I put on. They're like, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, good story. And I'm like, no, me, that's not herpes, okay? It's from the from the glue, from my brocha. Look, cholo fit, here it is. They're like, yeah, okay, nice to meet you. Like, So it became a problem in my social life. Yeah, so I had to, uh, I had to, I, I, but I found, well, I had a homegirl who does like characters and, right, right. and she goes, hey, you need to use, uh, you know, these strips. They're made for like toupees and shit. Oh shit! So you could sweat in them, and 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 you know that don't work. Be all good. Now, have you ever had one fall off during the set? Yeah, for yeah, for real. No shit. Look, but you, I usually have a band or a DJ, so I'll just kind of look at them like, hey, play a jam, like real quick, like you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. just give me, a, 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 and I'll just fucking go put some more glue or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, there you go right there, homie. All right, shit. Now we're representing. Oh wait, one last thing, eh? One last thing. Oh shit, where's it at, fool? I got it. Oh, aquí está. There it is. Hell yeah. Now, do you use the I same see. one or you have multiples? Nah, this one I've had for about three years now. Yeah. Okay. Bought it at Radio Shack since RIP, Radio Shack. All right. went out of business. Eh? Yeah, but. This generation probably won't even know what the hell Radio Shack is. I know, right? <laughs> he means Best Buy, right? Yeah. <laughs> nah, full Radio Shack for me. But yeah. So that's it, homie. And then I get out like that. I get all pumped up. I do my little push ups and, and then get out there, do my thing. Dope, dope. But uh, do, do you have any cholo fit uh, protein? Yeah, well, I got the the uh, up up and away protein okay. powder. I got a video about it, so it's a little. Uh, it says it has two arrows say up up, and there's a little picture of a, of away, you know. And he's he's just like a little paisano looking for with a hat, but he has a cape on, so he's ready to take off, you know. So up up and away protein powder. Yeah, yeah. What about the energy tamales? Did you bring any? I couldn't, homie. It's hard right now with the pandemic for the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. They're like, hey, you know, we got to yeah, shut gotta the energy tamales. Yeah, like, slow it down because we need fools to just kick it out the pad. If you give them energy tamales, they're going to be like, hey, well, let's go somewhere. And it's like, nah, fool. Like, you know, you just got to kick it right there. So That'll I'm work. trying to come out with a, you know, some kind of, you know, calmado caldo or something to make you chill out so you can quarantine and stay safe. That'll work. Listen, we're going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break. Uh, you're going to show me a couple of workouts, push ups, sit ups, pull ups, whatever. Sh- show me something. Uh, we're going to take a 10 minutes. We'll be back. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about what can we expect from him now, especially now since everything's on pause because of this uh, Corona crap. But uh, once again, call somebody, take somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that creeper cholo fit is in the motherfucking building and once again mini micheladas get at him at blast aware uh blast aware on instagram and we'll be back i'm gonna take a couple of shots i'm gonna take a, a michelada sip and uh we start stuttering forgive us so we'll be back
and we heard about this young kid from the harbor area named Tony A. And he was a DJ, you know what I'm saying? He was going in with, with the big with the big stars, you know what I'm saying? And he was like one of us going in and infiltrating inside of all these MCs, you know what I'm saying? A rodeo mixtape is just mixed of different types of music, no matter what genre it is. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's like, a, like making your own musical movie. When La Raza came out, man, I just, even the amount of sales of the single of La Raza that got moved out of the rhodium was, it was crazy, bro. And that song just got played and was played in all the stands over there. And I was blessed to go back one time, even to see it. And I want to say in 91 or 92. Although they were not black, they were Oriental, Asian, whatever you want to call them. They, they were cool and they embraced everybody, blacks, Latinos, whoever came to the Came to the swap, meet the wanna buy music. They were record people. Hey Tony, drop that. What face? I bet. My name is the Croft, the C R A W F O R D, the poet high C. Tony A, the bitch is just as cool as a visit. Thinking out of turn, stabbing pussy like a lizard. Oh, so sorry, homie, I didn't mean to say that. Steve is in the house. Come on, watch her play that funky dope beat. You know you gotta throw me some stylish ass crop coming straight from the rhodium. You are now about to witness Tony A. Get the fuck. Yo, everybody, well, welcome back to a Rodeo Radio episode uh, 50. And uh, when we went to break, we took a couple of shots. I did a couple of squats, and he was checking out my glutes. He said that I had very nice glutes. So, uh, uh, gluteus yeah. mas o menos, yeah. Yes, exactly. So, uh, it was more on the mass side, so congratulations. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, uh, we're back. We're sipping on mini micheladas. Uh, my boy Blasto uh, gave me this bottle, and this one's a prop, but he doesn't really know that I'm going to keep it. So, uh, anyways, because the hey, shit Blasto, is Hey, Blasto, you said that was for me, hey? Whatever. Oh, see, that's messed oh, up. Oh, damn, fool. That's messed up, man. It's all right, man. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard to share in this pandemic, so you could have it, eh? Like, you know, I don't want to. That'll work. That'll work. Well, he's got more in the trunk, so, you know. It, 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 that'll work. That'll, and we uh sipping on a little bit of Patron, uh, Micheladas. And he's trying to figure out how to tag me. I'm tagging you right now, homie. Sorry. That'll work. It's okay. Uh, now, um, get to see. There was something I was going to tell you, but anyway, they're still watching. Mm. Yeah, I hey, hope you're still watching because eh? otherwise <laughs> we're just like, hey, you're doing like this. Huh. Yeah. Now, uh, I wanted to ask you something that somebody say you 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 just finished doing your stand up, mm -hmm. and you got hundreds of people there. Mm -hmm. Then you have a Q and A session, mm -hmm. and somebody comes up to you and says. Hey, man, because it's always that one person. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you know, uh, uh, you're not representing a raza right looking like that, you know. Right, right. What, what yeah. do you got to say for yourself? Like, how would you answer that? Yeah, homie, I mean, obviously, that's the thing. There's always going to be, you know, the self-righteous, fucking, you know, da-da-da, like, this is giving us a bad name, this is a thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, to me, I never, I, that never became even a concern to me. I was just trying to be funny in the beginning, homie. Yes. You know what I mean? And, but obviously staying in shape because I'm a creeper right now. And exactly. Like, but that fool Frankie, though, he was just trying to be funny. And then, uh, you know, and then it's only when something gets big, you know, and yes. when, when something pops off. And I'm not saying I'm all this and that, you know, like, I'm a, I like to be humble and everything. Oh, sorry, I'm hitting the mic but because the patron or the Don Julio. But uh, it was like... Uh, I answer I, the way I answer it is like this is like hey homie this is to me when I'm creeper I'm it, it, it's it's the most connected to my familia that like I could possibly be me when I'm expressing my art right you know what I mean because this is something I grew up around it's not like yeah my parents you know they they provided me a, a good or Frankie a good life and everything and even though they sent me to a Catholic school it wasn't like a you know a baller Catholic school, like there was still cholos and fools getting arrested in class, and you know, and right. cholas coming out the bathroom like, "Damn, this meth is crazy," and everything. Like, you know, like that still was still happening in my school. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like I was like this, you know. But at the same time, it was like, you know, it was like uh, I was always going. You know, my Nino. I, I always remember, homie. One of my favorite things eh, is 
is see my waiting for my dad to come home to work and he, he always had a low rider homie always had a low rider and then my nino who was president of lord our car club that fool put it down he still has a 39 plymouth fucking you yeah. know gangster style two-tone homie cream color with the tilt green like woo, homie you know <laughs> and every every holiday he always got me the best christmas gifts too yeah so i would be waiting by the window and we lived on a corner on the corner house you know and i'll be waiting for the him to turn the corner in that ride you know what i mean and 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 i was a i was a young homie eh? yeah you know i'm like you know six seven years old and that feeling from like getting that like just to see that fool coming come around the corner and that bomb my nino the fool that baptized me and fucking done it i was like <laughs> like that's what's up right there homie you know like i'm waiting for that shit yes, yes. you know and so like so that's so like so the people that feel that i'm putting a negative light on whatever like like yeah everybody has their opinions there's yeah. always gonna be you know haters right. or whatever like you know haters that's how they get through life eh? you know they they get online like oh i'm about to hate on this boy hey, tony the wizard he's whatever hey. and then they feel proud about it like yeah i'm gonna make myself a sandwich i did pretty good right now on hating mm -hmm. you know and it's like but you're just wasting your energy homie you ain't right. getting nothing done like congratulations that you could you're able to make yourself a sandwich but that's probably pretty much gonna be it for your life yeah. you know because you're just so like the way i see it is i get it homie i understand your opinion if you think i'm putting a negative light on our on our culture then cool then you don't gotta fuck with it you don't gotta fuck with me homie right. keep it moving you know right. if right. you want to if you want to take the time at, if you have enough time in your day to go ahead and write a paragraph about how you feel that i'm a negative uh you know thing for the culture then dang homie then you right, probably right. should be yeah doing, you got a lot of time on your hands yeah you got too much time on your hands hey eh? but 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 uh also uh with that being said is i my, my intentions have never been to be a negative thing. and also creeper is about positivity homie yes yes like you know what i mean and like i've been through and i know frankie you know he said like oh you know his parents like but you know i i saw the familia go through struggle you know i've had all my all my primos are in the streets on me gang banging da, da, yes. da. you know i went out of my way to try to fit in with them i got my ass kicked i have other fucked up things you know happen to me homie and people think oh like the the barrio shit is just like violence and da, da, da. but no it's also mental people right. have problems in their head homie because right. they don't have you know because they need that love you know what i mean right. they need that guidance you know right. what i mean and it's like so that's where i found where creeper where creeper like it was like the kind of like the perfect storm came together for him because he was about spirituality he was about you know being a fitness instructor homie like hey you know build your muscle a little bit feel good about your life and also representing the raza, homie, and the cultura, and that's Chicano culture, homie. Absolutely. And that's something that is not only never going to stop, but it's growing than never before, homie. You know right. what I mean? And so it's like, and I'm grateful for all the folks that paved the way for me to have this opportunity because I feel like now they respect it as an art rather than like, there's always going to be those folks, ah, he's, he's a, putting a negative light on Cholo culture and da-da-da. But no, right. homie, to me, this is art, homie. You right. know what I mean? It and is bringing joy and laughter to gente, to familias and people. There's people I see on the street, I'm not even, you know, I'm a, or that fool Frankie will be even rolling around. You know, he's just going to the store, he's at Vons or whatever, he's wearing his mask and they're like, hey, like, are you, are, are you creeper here? Like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, homie, I'm just, you know, right here trying to not to get the rona or whatever, but <laughs> like. All good, man. But yeah, yeah, so all I could say is, uh, have your opinions. Right. Do what you do. Right. But do you, homie, exactly. and let me do me. Yes, all good, man. Well, you know what? Let, let me say this. I support you, and we all here support you. I think you're fucking hilarious this time that I'm watching you, and I'm just fucking busting up. Now, but let me say this to those people, and maybe I shouldn't even address them, but let me say this. Back in the day, they didn't have a problem with Cheech and Chong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's some. They did. There was some that did. Okay. But just because there wasn't social media back then. Right. And there wasn't things, you know, so right. they didn't right. have that. But Cheech, who I've had a hey, shout out to Cheech on me yes. and his familia. He booked me on a show one time to he had, he did a thing for to a fundraiser because he got a he got a museum, homie, in Riverside. Wow. For his, you know, as an art collector. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, homie, that fool got, he's got art there. Like, that fool's fucking. Oh, I'm going to have to go there and tell him that uh, uh, um, Creeper sent me. and so Oh, dude, go check it out, homie. And the city, like sponsored them whatever but 
But uh, I had a talk with him about that. I said, hey, homie, like, you know. And then, because some fools were like, oh, you're just trying to be like Cheech, whatever. But I was like, nah, homie, obviously Cheech is an influence. I fucking love that fool, homie. Of course, yes. And when, when I got the opportunity for him, when he booked me on a show, we did it at, at Cal State Northridge. And like KCRW or whatever, they, they promoted it. It was packed out. And, uh, and he was like, he showed me love. And his familia was all like, we love Cholo Fit and da da awesome. So when that happened on me, I was even more like, just get it on me. <laughs> like, fuck, I did. I think I did like 25 push-ups right there in front of him. But I was all kind of embarrassed, but I was trying to represent, you know? So, yeah, like, I was ha happy to get his blessing. But obviously, he's been a big influence. But I, I talked to him about that. I said, hey, homie, how do you, how do you, you know, how'd you deal with that? Or, you know, how'd you, you know, when you have to deal with the... Because, you know, in, in the end, we're artists, homie. We're right, trying to do our right. thing. So it's right. like when you put all your ganas and your fucking work into a piece of something. Right. And it takes nowadays with social media, it takes, you know, 10 seconds for some fool to be like, oh, you ain't shit, fool. Like, da, da, da. Like, you're just some lame. Like, right. you know, and it's like, and sometimes, you know, it used to affect me. Right. But now I've gotten better at being like, <laughs> I'm just going to do my thing, you know, but, uh. But he really helped me out, homie. He goes, yeah. He goes, of course I doubt with that. You know, wow, people see, think, oh, you're feeding into stereotypes. Da, da, da. But it's also like, it's a way to for people right. to relate to each other and just have a good time, homie. And first of all, take a fucking joke, homie. Thank you. Thank take you. a joke. Eh? You know, it's funny that that's news to me because I would have never have thought that, that he would have gotten that, to be honest with you. I mean, I used to love it. And Up in Smoke, remember when he was in the Impala and he rolled up the, the back window? Yeah. Love machine? Where you going? That motherfucker was hilarious, <laughs> bro. I love it. And yeah. with the girls at the bus stop, he's like, you need a ride? She's like, no. He's like, are you sure, are you sure I'm going that way? <laughs> you don't know where she's going then, but he's Hurry like, up, bu double there. bubble. And that, that shit is fucking <laughs> hilarious, bro. I mean, how many quotes do we get from that shit? <laughs> that shit's amazing, bro. But you know what? We have love and we support you here. And I'm glad you came. So now, you know what? During the break, you were saying that when you were performing, that you actually had fitness instructors come. Can you share a little bit about that? Duh. My most eye-opening experience with that I'm not gonna lie, there was a club, and the club was called Crackers Comedy Club, homie. Crack in Indiana. Fool, when these, my agent, or sorry, I don't mean all Hollywood, my agent had hit me up. And you, you, you want another shot, bro? This and that. Uh, I'll just, yeah, why sure, not? why not? Go Let's ahead. Do it. All right, go ahead, talk, and I'll pour. I, like I said, I haven't been out of my house in 12 days, homie, so yes. might as well, you know? Yes. So, but anyways, my agent hit me up, he goes, hey, Crackers Comedy Club. Imagine being a Chicano from from Khalifa's homie, yes. you know what I mean? And, and and my agent calls me, Crackers Comedy Club in Indiana, they wanna book you, they want you to do six shows. Six shows at their club in Indiana. And I said, do they, wait, do they know what I do? Or they're just trying to get, did somebody cancel and they want me to fill in or right, what? Right, right, right. You know? Like, not only do I do a cholo homie, but I'm also gonna dr dress as a high and put some wedges on and do my thing, you know? And so, and I'm going to Indiana, you know, so, and they were like, yeah, they fucking think you're going to do good out there. Dog, I went out there, the shows were packed, and I was telling my homie right here, my big homie, is a fitness community, eh, in oh, fucking shit. Indiana. Dog, there was this fool, the host came up to me, the very first show, he comes to the green room, he goes, hey, dog, there's this big, buff-ass white homie fucking wearing a Trump shirt in the front row, and he's like, but he's about five rows back, he's going to be to your left. But so immediate, he was thinking, oh, this fool's here to start shit. Right. But I'm thinking, this fool ain't going to spend his feria right. to come sit here. And heckle, maybe? <laughs> Who's that over there, right? That's your brother, huh? Yeah. See, this is my brother. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I was like, this fool ain't going to pay his feria. Da, da, da. So I was like being optimistic, you know, like, fuck that. Because I'm all, you know, creeper. I'm about positive vibes. Fuck it, homie. Keep it moving. Exactly. I got one life to live, homie. I ain't trying to fucking Yo, fuck with no negative shit. So I go out there and I see the fool laughing. Even though he's wearing that shit, I'm like, fuck it. So, because politics aren't my thing. Like, obviously, I have my beliefs, you know. Right. And, and we got to we gotta stand our ground and all that. But... For me, like my lane is, hey, I'm a fitness instructor. I'm trying to just, you know, get people in shape and be all positive and hopefully make you laugh. And then that fool got in line for the meet and greet after. Big old buff white boy. Big as this fool right here. Damn. That's a big ass white boy right there yes. too, homie. And and he's wearing that shit. Fucking and I'm like, fuck, fool. Like, is this fool gonna trip? Like what? You is know? he gonna pick me up or something? Dog, he came up and he fucking was like Hey, I'm a fucking fitness instructor. I brought my my fucking family. He had like seven people with him. 
hey, Creeper, we love you, you know. Well, he wasn't talking like that. He was more like, hey, Creeper, we love you, man. You fucking son of a bitch. You're so fucking funny, man. I fucking tell my brother-in-law all that time, man. When my brother-in-law calls me telling he's depressed, I said, hey, brother, you're like that last tortilla with a little bit of mold on it. Just scrape it off. You're going to move it through. You're going to be good, brother. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking tripping out over here. I'm like, fuck, fool. So the fact that I could connect with a fool that has totally different outlooks on yes. politics and life than I do, you know, obviously I'm like, fuck your shirt, homie. But also, damn, yeah. at least we could share this common ground. eh? Yes. So that's my lane, homie. Fuck it. We got one life to live, homie. I don't know what the next president's going to be or this and that. Like, I'm in the moment, homie. I'm trying to make you laugh. I'm trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to represent, like, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. That shit's dope, man. You know what? Now, uh, I checked out all your YouTube stuff. Can uh, Obviously, you're working. Uh, what can people expect? You got a new material lined up? Uh, um, any more YouTube videos? Um, are, you, are you videotaping right now? You know, anything you can fill us in? Yeah, so just on some straight up, like, what we're all dealing with this pandemic shit is like yeah. uh uh you know uh my the way i would because i don't have a i'm not you know i'm not famous famous homie i don't have a tv show i don't have you know movies out right like the way i make my my living is live shows you know what mm -hmm. i mean and those are all canceled right now you know right. like my the the most money i was ever gonna make off comedy was gonna be in in march and april of this year in 2020 oh shit because the tickets were already they were already purchased you know and thank you for the homies that purchased it but you got your refund so congratulations but uh but like you know it was like my live shows were my thing and that's my thing because i love to feel the gente's energy right there or whatever and when i say gente i mean the white homies too right because i know you're right there like hey, so and any race i don't care homie like i'm just trying to make I'm, if i could make you laugh and right. i see you laughing at my shit that just gives me more motivation because right? yes, like yes. whatever background you're from yes you know and uh like uh so the next my next move is what everybody else in the entertainment industry is trying to do it is like what are we going to do with this hey eh? because yes. with this whole social distancing thing like they're they're saying that it might la last longer than even the rest of this year right right so you know I, i've been trying to take my steps i ordered a green screen and you know i put it in my pad so i could maybe pretend that i'm at the gym even though it's closed <laughs> you know but you know or, or just whatever but uh, i'm right. gonna try to just keep putting shit out there to try to get people you know just to try to entertain homies yes, man yes. And, and, and to get through but but also like you know on the money wise like the thing like but i was fuck, homie, i was busting tables you know four years ago still delivering food you right, know right. even when cholo fit went viral I would be delivering food or bus. No joke on me. I was busing a table at this spot, and it was kind of like a nicer spot. So I had the little thing to get the crumbs off your table, like oh yeah, hey, you know, make sure you're comfortable because yeah. nobody wants crumbs right there. Like you know, it's not Denny's, eh? Like so whatever. <laughs> so I was cleaning off the crumbs, eh? Like with the little, you know, the little. Yes. It looks like a butter knife, but it's more of a scraper for crumbs. It's like some high class, like it's for the white people shit. Like hey, you know, they don't like the crumbs, eh? So yeah. I was cleaning the crumbs. And no joke, homie, this fool suited, homie. You could tell this fool at Feria. Right. You know, like, obviously, he's eating right there. Right. And I'm over there being all proper. You're supposed to be invisible, you know? Like, yes. you know, I'm only here to service you, like, whatever. And he goes, hey, uh, no disrespect, but uh, are you Cholo Fit? A creeper? You know? And he and he said, the Cholo Fit creeper? Are you that? And I said, but I was trying to do my job at the same time. So I was like, uh, yes, sir, I am. Uh, yes, I am. I, I do the cholo fit, and uh, yes, that's me. And uh, but at the end, at the end, I saw him get comfortable. I said, "Hey, yeah, homie, it's me. That's what's up right there." I just walked away, and then, you know, I took his crumbs and threw them away. Yeah. Hey, did that? Did did you have to practice for that whistle, or did that come naturally? Come on, me, the whistle. You know, that's it, homie. It's ready, homie, and it feels good, eh? Even sometimes when Frankie, when Frankie Quinones gets down and depressed, especially right now in quarantine, because I like to be around people, homie, right, around right, gente, right. And I've been on my primos, eh? Because they're still having barbecues. They're like, oh, the quarantine, we don't have to work. Like, let's barbecue. And I'm like, hey, homie, there's a fucking disease going around. Like, you can't just have fucking random whoever going around to the pad for barbecues. Like, right, right. And they're right. all mad at me right now. Like, oh, he thinks he's too, he's too Hollywood for the barbecues. I'm like, I'm not too Hollywood, homie. I'm fucking trying to be, you know, smart with my shit to not get a disease. Because if I get sick and, I'm, and I can't do the shows that are hopefully going to be able to do, then... Then right. I don't can't pay my bills, homie. You know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. So, but, fuck, what was your question again? Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'll be up with you. Yeah, you gave me the shot, eh? Fuck. All good, all good. You know what, let me... Pass me a luchador right there. I gotta open up another beer. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. See, he's ready, oh, yeah. he's ready to put somebody in a chokehold. Look at, hey, are you okay, homie? Positive vibes. Hey, I know you're angry right now, but go ahead and open that up right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see, right here, it's like a fucking like headlock. Yeah, see, there so, you go. Homie. Luchador from Tijuana. But anyways, uh, um, oh, you know what? I just poured some more michelada. Blasto on uh, Blasto Wear. Blasto, on... homie, I hope you got a botella for me, homie, in the... In the, in the... Yes, yes, he does. Orale. We'll take his whole damn box. Me, Big Daddy Swalls, and Esteban, we'll get him, bro. Don't worry about Let's it. Let's get it, homie. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, so now, um, again, we don't know how long this shit is going to last. Obviously, you have things in the works. How, how far yeah. has Cholo Fit uh, taken you? Have you gone... Uh, out of the U.S. at all with, with this guy? Yeah, yeah, homie. I mean, uh, th there was something that got put on hold. I was supposed to go to Japan for for something because obviously there's a lot of gente that knows that you know uh, Chicano culture goes hard in Japan. Yes. Eh? yes. You know, Esteban will be one of the ones to tell you like it hits out there, and yes. and I get mad love in Japan. And there was actually a fool in uh, well, I said it was in Japan. It was in Taiwan. It was a Taiwanese fool, and he redid he did a remake of the Cholo Fi video. No shit. And he's in like downtown Taiwan, you know, bunch of, and he's like, okay, uh, Cholo Fi. And oh, sorry, I'm not trying to be racist or whatever, but he that's how he was talking though. And he was just like, you know, Cholo Fi, all right, Bastri, Chino, oh, represent, you know, da da da. And he did a whole remake of it, and that shit blew my mind. Like that, this fool took the time out of his day yes. to gather fucking ten you know, people and be like, hey, yeah, let's go downtown and redo this fool's video. They probably never met a cholo in their life, you know? Right. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Japan, though, they go hard on that shit. I've been to Tokyo to do, uh, to perform stand-up. Really? And, man, those fools are hitting switches out there. They got low lows. They, like, they're, they're doing I, I, it. I've seen, like, like on, on the internet, like, uh, you know, I had opportunities in the 90s to go to Japan, and to be honest with you, I had opportunity to go to Australia, Japan, Canada, and uh, Europe. And I'll be honest with you, every time they tell me how long the flight was going to be, I never wanted to go. Oh, dog. Yeah. That's why you got Xanax. I, I, I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up, but... The pastillas are there for you, eh? I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> he said Xanax. Okay. I know. I know. Hey, you guys, it's okay to laugh out loud, you guys. It's okay. We have know, an audience, right? okay? We can laugh out loud. It's all good. It's all good. You know what? Because I'm feeling a little bit of pedo. You know, yeah. I'm going to take a little bit. I'm going to sip a little bit more in the shot. I served you a little bit more. Oh, you did? So, yeah. So the people he said came, a little bit more. It's full. Yeah, it's full, pero it's just a little bit more, eh? So, hey, mom, if you're watching, don't trip, all right? I know. I know. I'm going to go. You'll make it up tomorrow in push-ups. Yeah, there you go, homie. Yeah, I ran six miles today, not to brag, but salud. Once again, mini micheladas. <sighs> It's the shit. You know, what's, you know what's dope about it? You can see the chili up in this motherfucker right here. I think he probably grinded it himself. <laughs> Let me see that. What is yeah. it called? It's concentrated. Mini Michelanas. Damn, he, he, the food's represented on there too. Yeah, that's know? him. That's him. I hear the whistle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's him. That's he, what's up right there. All he, in the bigs. He, he, he told yeah. me he stepped, up, he stepped on the chili that's barefooted. <laughs> So it's a personal connection, eh? Yeah. Exactly. I feel the personal connection, yeah. Just don't smell the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, blast the homie representing right here. That's right, though. Esteban, if you want one, help yourself, my brother. Mini Michelada. So. Hey, mini Michelada. I like that, homie. Yes, represent for the little it's homies. Little right there, <laughs> hey, I have a video online. Well, not me, but Frankie. He has a video online called Little Homie Awareness. Uh -huh. Tell me. Tell me about it. Yeah, but look it up, homie, on the YouTubes or whatever. It's called Little Homie Awareness. And it just brings attention to our struggles, eh? You know, and it's not like a little person or, you know, a midget is the improper term. Right, right, right. But a little person is a midget. But that's a little homie, you know, is like five, six, you know, like five, three to like five, seven. That's the little homie range. Okay. But we still have our battles too, también, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I did a video called Little Homie Awareness, which is if you're five, three to five, seven, any homies out there then go check it out homie on the youtubes or whatever little homie awareness it work. just shows our battles and everything but blasto you get it homie but you're able to overcome it and do your thing like that's what's up you know it's funny uh years ago i had a little homie he was like what well, actually two little <laughs> this was eight years ago i had a little homie it was a trip <laughs> it was like two little homies one of them they, they were probably like four eleven five foot one of them was taller than the other and i asked him Hey, how tall are you guys? Both of them said 5'3 at the same time. And I'm like, one's taller than the other, bro. You can't, both cannot be Oh, uh, yeah. Three, you know, but. Because when, you, when you're when you dealing with that, you know, height 
issue then you're you're uh, you know you start applying shoes that you're wearing or yes. uh, like when i wear my cortez you know i'm five seven homie like no doubt even though it's five six and a half fuck it we'll round it up you know because <laughs> i like I have the cortez right here if you look that's why i love cortez because it's a classic shoe and people respect it gente respects it but ira look homie see even this one it makes you a little bit taller yeah, that's a solid. Oh, that's over an inch yeah. easily. I'm Only usually nine. six three with this, um, six four. Sometimes when I wear my uh, my Afro wig, like six nine. So yeah. Yeah, see, oh, give or take. Oh, oh you got Afro wig? Oh, yeah. forget it, homie. Then dang. Then, yes. Yeah, you're out of the. Yeah, you're in a different league now. That's when yeah. I jump into not Antonio but Anton, so uh, character. But uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> you, you, you know what? I would love to see you in movies, man. Has anything like that been offered to you at all? Has anything like that been talked about? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a trip because, you know, being in the game is a, it's a, it's an interesting thing, homie, especially coming like this, you know? Yes. Because I don't care. At first, when I would first get like pitch meetings, you know, when, when mm -hmm. ABC or Netflix wants to meet me and they come in, I'm like, oh, I got to act all proper and, you know, do the things. And, but then after time, of being rejected over yes. and over yes that's part of the game yeah if you can't deal with rejection then this ain't for you homie entertainment ain't for you exactly. you know what i mean because you're gonna get shot down especially i'm coming in like this with me you know i'm wearing my cutoff sweat i'll go into meetings like, walking I don't care, in like this. i'm walking in like that like hey fuck, what's up you guys want to do this or not you think you can make money off this or probably not though but uh but um I've learned uh, just to, like I said, be more comfortable being myself and, and feeling my my familia inside of me when I go into those pitch meetings. Awesome. Because, uh, but yeah, we have a Cholo Fit Rise and Fall of Creeper feature movie that oh, wow. has that we've been working on for two years now. Okay. And uh, now it's just a point of finding the right production company and finding the right, and you know, we've had offers that can make it happen, but they want to own They're like, okay, yeah, we'll make it, but we're going to own the character. We're going to, I said, chale with that homie. Like I'm fortunate enough to be in a place where I could be like, I'm good homie. Like, yeah. I'm not going to have you have own rights to the merchandise and toda la chingada and all that. Like, nah, like, shh. like that's for us. Don't try right. to take that from us. You know, exactly. Exactly. like it, it didn't, it, you know, it, it didn't happen overnight. Like you say, like you're a hard worker, homie, you do your thing. You yes, know what sir. I mean? It yes, takes sir. ganas, homie. It takes years. It takes ganas. paying dues. Absolutely. You know, everybody wants a shortcut, eh? Especially in Hollywood. Everybody's looking for a shortcut. It's all about who you meet, you know, who you rub elbows with, you know, <laughs> and get the connections. Show face. Show face. No, nah, homie. It's about ganas. If you fucking, if you have something, if you have the goods, homie, it's gonna, those fools are going to come to you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, one thing I always said about production, because people always say, I'm trying to shop it, homie. I'll tell you what, do good music, they'll come knocking. Money exactly. will come knocking. Exactly. And that's the way it is. Make sure you release good product, not just a bunch of bullshit. If you got good product, people are going to hear about you, they're going to come knocking. So other other than that, um, like I said, I wish we weren't going through this pandemic, but we are. And uh, I have a good time entertaining people at home. You know, it's kind of like a little get a, uh, getaway. But at this point in time, is there anybody or anything you want to bring up or give a shout out to as we come to a close oh man uh well big shout out to the triple og esteban oreo triple og go give me a ride he gave me a ride over here the fool is fucking i'm so proud of this homie right now can you come in the camera or not or yeah yeah yeah, yeah anything anything he, anything he wants now did you give him gas money bro at all or no? i'm filling his tank no okay. doubt okay right there right there homie Come in some more. Come in. A little more. Oh, a little more. <laughs> hey, but social distancing, eh? Hey, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or on the other side. Yeah, but hey, it's my homie right here. <laughs> but nah. Esteban, LA Originals, everybody. A legend, homie. Legend, homie. You know what? Can, can, can we get a round of applause, bro? Yeah. Hey, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, uh, Stefan, thank but, you for coming. When I saw you, yeah. I saw your eye smile. I was like, that's him. Yeah, I pointed yeah. at you. That's dope, man. Yeah. I'm glad you came. Hell yeah. We gotta support the homies. All right, right. Thank you, OG. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for the ride, too. And you gotta you gotta drive back with me in this condition, too. Yeah. So, fuck, homie. We've got a lot of things to talk about, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and shout out to Amanda Lopez, Trevor Trainer, 
um, they, they're the ones that connected me to this fool. But after I was already buying his products and his books and everything for a long time, I was too nervous to say what's up to him. But now we're homies and we have a lot of laughs and a lot of good times. And uh, we're trying to represent for the Chicano culture to the fullest, homie. So thank you guys for the support. To Tony A, the wizard, homie. Dang, all magical right there. Like nothing. Fuck. That's Damn. what's up right there. All in the mix, eh? Fuck. That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> Hell yeah. That'll work, man. That'll work. Anything else you want to say before I give my shout outs? Because when I give my boy John Elkins a shout out, kind of take a little bit long. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to say it like this. Uh, so, I got I got a set up at my crib because I can't, I can't even book. Uh, camera crew nothing right now homie because of the pandemic they won't legally allow me to book like a sound man a crew or nothing like that you know we were ba barely able to pull off the promo we did for uh la originals uh we did it in a parking lot just kind of guerrilla style um so you know we have our thing i know tony has a link to support him if you got what was it cash app or venmo or whatever like yes uh, all that it's, it's a um chicanos are us um <laughs> Yeah, no. you go to chicanosrus.com. I, yeah, I applied to Toys R Us to help them move out because they went out of business, but they said, nah, we can't have you in there like that with the headset and the cutoff sweats and everything. So, <laughs> documixery.com is where you reach me. Yes. There you go, homie. But uh, yeah, so just uh, support us and then shout out to, yeah, yeah. Sorry, homie. you got me fucked up now. I'm intoxicated, eh? So I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up with you because you guys are gente. You guys are good followers. I got my homie John Elkins right there on the fucking keys right there. And he's real professional with his emails and everything. And then Tony A, the wizard, eh? Thank you for having me, homie. Thank you, brother. Hey, but most importantly, I'm grateful that we're, we have... It took a lot of us, a lot of us artists coming together to make Chicano culture a, like a thing that is like, oh, fuck, these fools aren't going away. Like, mm -hmm. these fools are a thing, homie. Yes. You know what I mean? Because it's fucking, like, in the end, for me, I'm just trying to make you laugh. I don't give a fuck, homie. Like, take me to Burning Man with 12 white people. I'll fucking get it cracking, eh? You know? But also, take me to the fucking hood, to your fucking barrio fucking, fucking bar. Fucking Sancho's number two, whatever the name of the bar is. I'll go in there and get it cracking, too. It's about bringing people together, homie, and making people laugh. Because that's all we got. Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Especially with all this shit going on. Who the fuck knows, homie? So don't waste no time on no negative energy. My homie Tony A, the wizard, know what's up. You know, he's a wizard, eh? When he sees negativity, he's got a little magic wand and it's gone. Ya estuvo. Ya estuvo con la negativity, eh? So, all right? So stay positive, do your thing, keep it moving, homie. Progress, eh? Take care of your familia, number one. That's what's up right there. That's right. Take care of your glutes. Oh, yeah. but also, yeah, uh... Uh, TBS, I got a, I'm in a show with some homies called Dress Up Gang, and they're dropping it on TBS in May next month. So check T that out too. Cause quick question: What does TBS stand for? Turner Broadcast Systems or something, or I don't know. Something like that. After a couple of more shots, you'll be able, yeah. you'll remember. <laughs> and also Cartoon Network. Hey, I'm on a show called Victor and Valentino. I voice I voice uh, Maria Teresa, which is basically Juanita Carmenita, damn, and a full name Nacho. E. Full Nacho's in a biker gang, and the leader of the biker gang is Danny Trejo, my homie. Who's fucking mm. hell yeah? He's a Rams fan, so I hope I don't know how he feels about that new logo, but because it looks like a penis, and they're gonna ram each other. Not not Danny Trejo, hey Danny Trejo, respect the homie. Like, I mean, like you know the the Ram shit, but. Uh, <laughs> But I just want to say, Victor and Valentino, it's for kids. It comes on Saturday mornings, but season two, we got a second season. It premieres this Saturday morning on Cartoon Network, homie. And I, vo I voice Maria Teresa and Nacho and a few other characters. But that's our thing, homie. So thank you, dog. Thank you for letting me rant right now. Fuck. All Let's good, go my brother. Shots. All good. All in the mix. You're, hey, the, you're the patron, homie. Yeah. <laughs> the website. All good. That's okay. What's, what's the website, bro? www.blastostreetwear.com or um, www.blastostreetwear.com Yeah, and watch... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, and watch LA Originals on Netflix, homie. It's number five in the motherfucking country, eh? And that's Chicano culture shining to the fullest. That's what's up. Support. support. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Getting emotional. What else, brother? What else? Can, tell me. Yeah, check out the site real quick. Okay, right here. www.blastofstreetwear.com. Got the mini Michelada mix. 
Blasto where on Instagram. Yes, you, what he said. Okay, anyways, everybody, let me go ahead and give a uh, shout out first of all to Creeper, Frankie. Muchas gracias, brother. Muchas gracias. gracias like, I, I, tío, I, I cannot Respecto. thank you enough. Uh, uh, Stevan Orio, once again, legend in my presence. Thank you, everybody, once again. Thank you for coming. And let me go ahead and give a shout out to John motherfucking Elkins. John uh, Elkins, dog. <laughs> hey. Fucking, I was in communications with emails. He's all professional with Real his professional. emails. Hey, you got a good vato right there. Hey, I know. It's, that's pinchy milkweed right there, homie. Hey, hey, milkweed. You did a good job. Hey, stay all professional with your emails, eh? Because I was like, oh, fuck, he's got a guy that's like, you know, Hell he's yeah. in the office. He's but he got his placasos all fucking representing right there. Hell yeah, Shit. American History X all day. Right there, homie. But grew up around Chicanos. All right, cool, homie. That's right. So, so I, I got to give a shout out to him. He's got his uh, anal bleach coming. <laughs> he's got his stripper glitter on the way. It's being processed right now. Uh, his anal um, <laughs> So, uh, once again, oh, make sure you look them up. Go to uh, Ram, ramcity.org. Yes. Ram, Ram, Ram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. Let, <laughs> All right, buddy. This is the end of it. Here. Okay. My boy, DG, Daniel, DG Media Clip. You can reach him on Instagram. Uh, once again, my boy Big Daddy Swoles. You don't want to fuck with Big Daddy. Big, oh, Big Daddy. Big, Big Daddy Swoles. Ya no bien borracho, güey. Fucking uh, Sandy Pants, uh, Blasto, hey. Esteban, hell, hell yeah, and uh, Cholo Pit, Creeper, Frankie, Juanita Carmelita, and uh, you guys don't know that I'm a hookup with Juanita. <laughs> Yo, yo, and I gotta give a shout out to my brother because el cabrón se va a enojar. Ruben, uh, um, uh, Spice Smuggler. I don't know what the fuck Spice Smuggler, but on Instagram, Spice Smuggler. So, so reach him. He's selling dick pumps. So anybody that wants yeah. one. Because fools in quarantine. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. They're like, Man, fuck, maybe it can get bigger if I'm in quarantine. Maybe, yeah. So Either get that the or pump, yank the foreskin, yeah. something. But Do anyway. the pump. <laughs> and then maybe, you know. There's hope, eh? So focus on that, you know? Yeah. Yo, Julia Ori Oriana, hopefully I didn't butcher your name. Uh, thank you for uh, blessing us with that uh, and anybody else. So other than that, see you guys Sunday. I release the flyer tomorrow. We have a double feature. And let me say this. Let me say this. Um, we have a, not only a comedian coming in on Sunday, but also a rapper coming on Sunday that probably, in my opinion, for 2020, has the hottest lyrical rap song out so far okay so stay tuned and we out brother anything else nah that's it homie hey tony the wizard gracias homie thanks for having me rhodium radio you guys tune in homie this guy's doing his thing homie gracias. that's what's up the reason why they call me the wizard is because i have the magic stick Macha, <laughs> all right we out all right johnny boy take us away oh.